Bill was a self-proclaimed rebel in his youth whose biggest pleasure was his motorcycle and the roar of its massive engine. He most cherished his freedom and independence, which were stolen from him prematurely through the course of an unexpected and life-threatening series of catastrophic illnesses. Just a few weeks ago, Bill and his wife Nancy opened their door of their home to us to share their journey and experiences. When I first found out how sick I was, it was because a doctor advised me to get a, a stress test, and I found out my heart was only pumping at 25%. They decided soon after that that I would need a defibrillator. I got the defibrillator, and approximately a year later is when, on Thanksgiving, uh, I thought my remote control zapped me. Then after the second shock, we realized, you know, no, it was his defibrillator, so called 911 and he went to the local hospital. Bill's heart was so weak, he would need a heart transplant, which meant a potentially long wait until a suitable organ was found. Life for Bill would never be the same, yet together, Bill and Nancy would endure the unthinkable, staying firmly rooted in their support and love of each other. When I was 18 and Nancy was 17, she came to work part-time where I was working and as I was introduced to her, uh, I shook her hand and asked her to go out with me at the same time. <laughs> and I was completely captured by her. And we went out, uh, we were together every day for three weeks. And after three weeks, uh, at the end of a shift, I walked her out to her car and uh, I told her I have something very important I want to ask you. I told her that uh, I couldn't imagine being without her ever again. And I asked her to marry me, and she said she would. And I asked her, what was your question? And she said, uh, will you take me to my junior prom? <laughs> so I did, and uh, here we are 45 years later. Bill's heart failure landed him in the hospital for months on end, and he required a machine called an LVAD, a left ventricular assist device, which is implanted into his torso and mechanically pumps the heart. Uh, but after almost a year, the machine couldn't give me the amount of energy that I needed. So I had to go back into the hospital and be put on a pneumatic drive. Being on the pneumatic drive was cumbersome. I could still walk the hallways, but I had to push a unit around that was about the size of a dish portable dishwasher. Bill was in the hospital for a total of 13 months. For both Bill and his family, the loss of independence, freedom, and the basic pleasures of life was devastating. Well, I love my motorcycles. Uh, I started out with a moped and took a lot of flack for riding a moped, but that's how I started and move my way all the way up to the biggest motorcycle you can find. Because of his biker's build, Bill would need to wait for a heart donor, not just of the right blood type, but also of the right size. And then, after over a year of waiting, one miraculous day, the call came in. I was sitting in church, uh, we had a prayer, and when I looked up from our prayer, uh, someone was tapping me on the shoulder, and I looked over and the pastor was standing at the end of the pew motioning for me to come over to him. And so I went over. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, he handed me a note and I read the note and it said, <laughs> Sorry. It said, Bill got a heart. <laughs> I found out accidentally soon after that that the heart was coming from a fellow biker and he had died in a motorcycle accident. And that made it even more special. But disaster struck again, this time in the form of an infection in Bill's chest that was highly resistant to antibiotics and Bill weakened tremendously. Uh, they had to keep my chest open for six weeks and for six weeks they came into my room twice a day with betadine paddles and scrubbed my, ch my chest out and while they were doing that I could look down into my chest and see my heart beating. To get myself ready for something like this it's really hard to do 
Uh, but if I could tell myself anything, it would be give myself up sooner. Uh, allow the doctors and God to control what's happening. There were so many people praying for me, and I could feel the strength of their prayers behind me. I could feel the calm that their prayers caused me to have. When uh, they told me that I had uh, a heart available, and they told me I had to get ready to go down, and they'd call for the stretcher, I determined right then and there for the first time, I admitted there was a chance that I might die. And I thought, if it's the last thing I do on earth, I'm gonna walk. So I walked to surgery. And I don't believe anybody's ever done that before. Bill's recovery, although miraculous, changed his life forever in a way that is hard to imagine and shouldn't be underestimated. Bill and Nancy's experiences have left them with a powerful message to share. The patient, so often is sitting there scared stiff, which I wasn't, but I saw others who were and weren't getting answers. Too often, I laid in bed thinking if I could just get all of the specialists in my room at the same time. They could talk to each other and they could talk to me and I could actually feel like I'm a part of it rather than an outsider in my own care. Bill's illness was a very stressful time for me, um, as it would be for any family member, but uh, I felt very alone a lot of times. Um, I had to find some kind of normalcy to my life, so um, I had a full-time job. I kept working because that was the only thing that kept me normal at the time. Um, I don't know, I would get up, go to work go to the hospital for a couple hours, uh, come home, take care of the dog, go to bed, get up and do it all over again. I would say definitely make your wishes known ahead of time because that way your family isn't pressured to try to figure out what you want.